two sides of human nature. First, the selfishness and stupidity of those who just will not uh, social distance. But on the other hand, so many acts of kindness by ordinary people, as well as, of course, by the first line workers. Let's look on the screen and see uh, definitions of kindness. Aristotle said, it's helpfulness towards someone in need, not in return for anything, nor advantage, but for the person being helped. Mark Twain wrote, kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. The Bible calls it a synonym for love. Love is patient, love is kind. Now, before we delve deeper, I want to take a quick look at what the Apostle Paul was saying when he talked about the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, which is our passage. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience. And our topic today, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I want to go back for a few moments to about the time of the Lord's Supper. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. But what does it mean to bear fruit? Well, I think he's talking about two aspects of fruit that we're all aware of. We maybe never thought about it this way. Take an apple, you bite into it, you're eating the fruit. When you get to the core with all the seeds, you go, mm, no, thank you. Um, but it's the seed in the core that really reproduces. And that's part of being fruitful. I chose you to bear fruit uh, in life. Uh, the commission of God is for us to bear fruit, to share our faith with others. That's called commission. But also, it's also part of our character. Our commission is to live out the Great Commission, but our character is to show that we become new people. Let's look at what Jesus is saying, or Paul is saying about this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. This ministry that God was reconciling the world to himself not counting people's sins against them, and has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal, we implore you, be reconciled to God. So that's the commission. That's the reproductive part of fruit that Jesus said, I've ordained that you do it. But the other part that's clear and is in our text and is in our series, Galatians 5.22, is that of character. N.T. Wright, writer today who's fairly well known, among some anyway, wrote a book entitled After You Believe. The subtitle of the book, Why Character Matters. And in the second chapter, he uh, outlines the importance of character as part of being fruitful for God. Part of God's character is loving kindness. And we see this in Psalm 23, which the kids spelled out today, and that was fabulous. We see it in Acts chapter 14. Let's look at Acts 14. We saw Psalm 23 with one of the children said, surely goodness shall follow me and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In Acts 14, Paul and Barnabas uh, have the crowd say, you're the greatest, we need to worship you. And Paul said, of course not. It's God you need to worship. Who is God? Listen to what, who he is. Yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Those of you who know me well enough, when I've preached, here comes. I feel a hymn coming on in the light of the kindness of God. One hymn. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. For the love of God is broader than the measure of our mind. 
and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. Jesus was kindness incarnate. And what is happening to us in character is the life of Jesus is growing in us as our spiritual character grows, so we are being fruitful in the area of kindness. Ephesians 2, 7, I'll just read it to you. That in the coming ages, God might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed to us in the kindness of Jesus Christ, expressed to us in the kindness of Jesus Christ. Well, let's slow down a bit. Kindness, then, is part of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is character. The overall fruit that we're being called to is to go out and reproduce the core of the apple and to be a pleasant thing for people to enjoy, like the substance of the apple. And kindness as a statement, even as an idea, seems simple, but it's not always easy. I've listed some things. I don't think they're on the screen. It doesn't matter, but I've listed some things. Why do we fail to be kind? Why do I fail to be kind? Why do I do some things and I say, oh, I, I could have been kind. Why did I do that? Here are some ideas. It's partly because we want our own way and people challenge that. They don't agree with us and so we, we get angst and anger. It's partly because we do not recognize all the goodness that God has done for us. If he's done good for us, why hasn't he done it for others? And that person who may irritate you, God has loved them and done good for them, so why not be kind? Another reason is because we haven't grasped that we're all in the same boat. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all fail. We can still be kind to people who mess up. Um, this is a hymn, but I'll just quote it to you rather than expecting you to, to know it. It's a hymn about when Peter uh, had his mother-in-law healed and Jesus was healing the sick. And a writer writes and says, and even when the sun was set, the sick, O Lord, around thee lay. And he said, we're in the same mess. And then he went on to write this. Hear it carefully. And none, O Lord, have perfect rest. And none are wholly free from sin. And those who gladly serve you best are conscious most of wrong within. So what I'm simply saying is, when we understand that others fail like we do, it isn't hard for us to be kind because we would expect them to be kind to us. And another idea before we move on, I think we're not kind because we're a bit like the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. You know, the white rabbit storms across the scene and goes, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Get stuff to say hello, goodbye, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. What does that sound like in the average household? We become too occupied uh, to realize that good action needs to be taken. So I've said kindness doesn't come naturally. It's a struggle for many of us. It's a struggle for me at times. But it can come by God's spirit. That's the teaching of the series. The flesh does da 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 da. But the spirit of God, as he dwells in us and as we walk in step with him, begins to let this fruit mature and grow. I carry around a cup of tea quite a bit. So if I'm near a crowd, in the days when we used to be near crowds, if you bumped into me, guess what spilled out? In the same way, if I'm walking around following God's spirit and you bump into me or I run into a situation that needs somebody's caring, guess what bumps out? The fruit of the spirit. If I'm ignoring God and don't care, just doing my own thing, well, if you bump into me, I might get mad and say something I shouldn't, or a situation I just ignore the need. Kindness comes from the life of Christ in us. Jesus said it. I'll go back to the text uh, around the Lord's Supper. If you abide in me, if you're spending your time with me, if you're walking with me, if my spirit is growing in you, then you will bear fruit. You will bear the fruit of sharing your faith. You will bear the fruit of growing in your character. Kindness is in the very root of God's nature. And so as we are showing God-likeness through Christ in us, we are drawing people to Christ. Another little theological 
note about Galatians 5.22. It's not a list of nine different fruits. It's not a list of nine different characteristics. The fruit that God is giving us by his spirit means that we keep showing without rank or without schedule or with order, all those aspects of love and joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, and so, so, so on. Southside study guide. You know, for years I helped with the study guide and I just think it's a great thing. And this week, here's something to think on from the study guide. When I consider people who are kind, there are a number of things I notice. They are selfless, always thinking of others before themselves. They are present, always willing to give their full attention to others, regardless of the pecking order. They are supportive, always willing to lend a hand when another is in need. They speak less frequently because they listen. They do their acts of kindness without hoopla. They don't get irritated when interrupted. The list is much longer, but already it is easy to see how difficult it is to be kind. We can do some of the things, some of the time, but we default to these kinds of actions, thoughts, not very often. It's not about us trying harder, but rather about us surrendering to his will and training with him. In the study guide this week also, there's a reference about kindness to David and Mephibosheth, it's hard to say that at times, and Samuel chapter, uh, 2 Samuel chapter nine, or to the book of Ruth. If you want a romance, read the book of Ruth. You want to know how to get along with your mother-in-law, read the book of Ruth. If neither of those work for you, if you just want to be kind, read the book of Ruth. Or read the story of David. David had a friend called Jonathan. And uh, when Jonathan had passed away, Jonathan of course had offspring and he had a son and his son couldn't walk properly. I don't know what his leg problems were, but he could hardly earn his own income. And David called him and said, Mephibosheth, I'm going to look after you. I'm going to give you land, a farm where you can farm, and I'm going to get people to do the farming for you. And you can always come and eat at my table. You can drop in at the palace anytime and eat. You'll never be left alone. I incredible kindness. When Paul writes about the fruit of the Spirit, and kindness is one aspect of that fruit, he wasn't just writing to us as individuals. Bob, you do this, and Sam, you do that. He was writing to the whole church, the church that I've seen this morning, with over 100 people involved in the process. Um, he exhorted the Ephesian congregation, for example, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgive one another. And then he said to the church at Colossae, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility. Philippians chapter two is so well known, I think we should look at it because it's about the kindness we should have to one another. Therefore, if any have encouragement for being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any sharing in the spirit, if tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit. Don't do anything out of selfish ambition or conceit. In humility, value others above yourselves. These are all acts of kindness. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. We're coming near to a close. About two weeks ago, it was one, four, three day in Pennsylvania. Now what on earth does that mean? It was Fred Rogers Day of Kindness and before the service began today we saw clips of that kind of thing. Um, he ran the famous children's program that at least many parents will know uh, Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Mr. Rogers would have liked a day set aside for one, four, three an initiative begun by the uh, governor of Pennsylvania just a couple of years ago. What he said was, on the 143rd day of the year, 143, we're going to designate it a day of kindness in honor of Rogers, who spent most of his life in, in Pennsylvania. Um, 143 
if you pause and think about it, is one, I, love, four letters, you, three letters, one, four, three. That was his uh, mathematical code for saying to people, I love you. So this year, Pennsylvania State, I mean, the other part of the states, you, you saw all the riots last night and so forth, but here's another side to the story. Um, they launched this website um, about two weeks ago, 143, asking residents to share their good deed. Uh, from buying a meal for a neighbor to writing a thank you note and, and all the kindness they did. The hashtag was uh, number 143 day in PA. The 14 day website offers suggestions how to show kindness. But I was most impressed by the University of Pittsburgh, which is in Pennsylvania, as you all know. Uh, it marked the day the 143 Day of Kindness, by recalling the legacy of Rogers and highlighting the acts of kindness. Then it said this, I think this is fabulous. The university said in a tweet, there are three ways to ultimate success in life. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. The third is to be kind. Well, it's time to close. During the lockdown for all of us, I watched a six part series on KCTS. It was called The World on Fire. It was about World War II. It was powerful. In it was an actress called Helen Hunt. Most of you don't know who she was, but some of you might know. Uh, she was in the movie, uh, what was it, Twister, and also in the movie from the year 2000, that's 20 years ago, uh, called Pay It Forward. And so as we close out today's teaching, let's look at the statement and let's look at the movie. The movie Pay It Forward illustrates the power of one person can have to make an impact on a chain reaction of kind deeds. The philosophy of Pay It Forward is that through acts of kindness among strangers, we all foster a more caring society. In the book and the film, a social studies teacher in California challenges his students to change the world. One of his students, Trevor, takes the challenge to heart. He starts by showing kindness to a stranger, which ripples further than he could ever imagine. Is your assignment extra credit it goes on all year long now wait a minute what what what's wrong with this what's the matter yes it's, it's like so so what there must be a word to finish that sentence someone help her weird crazy weird. crazy hard bummer bummer hard how about possible it's possible the realm of possibility exists where in each of you here so you can do it that's me That's three people. And I'm going to help them. But it has to be something really big. Something they can't do by themselves. So I do it for them. Then they do it for the other people. That's nine. And I do three more. That's 20. Seven, so I, I'm not really good at math, but it gets big really fast, you know? Right, all right, all right, all right. A little articulation, please. Yes. 
I think it's a good idea. Sean? It's stupid. Adam? It's the honor system. People blow off the honor system. So what? Just because you do. <laughs> well, Trevor, the class seems to think that you've come up with an overly utopian idea. Look that word up in a minute. Like a perfect world? Mm-hmm. So? In the study guide this week, there are lists of things that we can do, like praying for someone, and I'll leave that with you. Let's pray. Father, most of us confess that we are not naturally kind, but I think all of us want to be. And the kindness comes from the character that you give us when we walk in your spirit. Help us to do that for Jesus' sake. Amen. Dad, thanks for that challenge this morning.